I was recently taught that fastener standards exist. Uh, Bob, can you explain a little bit why quality matters when it comes to fasteners? Sure. Um, fastener standards, I, I can't tell you when they first started, but it's been 50, 75 years anyway. And the, the thought process is uh, if you just have local machine shops making their own parts, uh, if someone's making a part that's a half an inch in diameter, a, a bolt, uh, and makes a matching nut to go on it, uh, what happens if that person drives that car down the road and uh, something breaks and they need to, to get another nut? They want the interchangeability uh, and a universal nature where you can go to any Ace Hardware, any Fast and All, uh, any Home Depot, uh, and the nuts and the bolts will fit together. Um, so it makes a whole lot of sense. And uh, because of the need for that, uh, the standards committees were developed, ASTM for the strengths, ASME for um, the, the sizes, the dimensions, SAE uh, also does strengths and materials. So different groups of people uh, involved trying to make sure that we have a uniform part that is basically always going to be um, the same, regardless of where you buy it. And when you get that, now the designers uh, have repeatability, dependability in what is that they're making. So the quality is inherently much better. So as a guy who DIYs projects all the time, uh, I don't have to be precise with my work, uh, but for manufacturers with tolerances, the tolerances matter. Uh, how exactly do tolerances play into quality? It's a, it's a very good question, and it does uh, fit well with the previous question on the standards. So uh, you can't make the exact same part every single time. So we're back to that half inch uh, diameter fastener. If we've got a fastener that's supposed to be a half inch in diameter, uh, what does it cost to make it exactly 0 0.500 in diameter every time? Well, it's a little cheaper if, can you take it anywhere from 499 to uh, 0.501, or it may be even a little less expensive if I get a wider range because you have different types of manufacturing processes that are allowed. Uh, so what happens there is you get a plus or a minus, how far can I be off? Uh, and the people that write the standards uh, and know what a part is supposed to be in order to make it work, uh, it's part of their job is to decide just how accurate you need to be uh, to balance the cost on one end with the uh, repeatability and, and usability on the other. So at Fastenal, we make a lot of custom parts. And something that I learned from you, thank you, sir, is that just because something can be drawn in CAD doesn't mean that it can be manufactured. Uh, avoiding special orders helps with price and quality. Why is that? Um, let me start this off by saying that there's a lot of CAD programs out there that even high schools have uh, uh, that a, a young engineer who likes to get a little geeky and, and draw stuff, uh, you can be on AutoCAD or SolidWorks or whatever, uh, coming up with things to look cool. And if you put threads on the end of them, uh, by golly, we can turn this into a fastener that does multiple things. Um, but when you look at the way fasteners are made, most of them, in order to make a uh, a fastener, a, a 10 cent, 20 cent part, uh, relatively inexpensively, uh, they're made through a cold heading process. So you're taking wire uh, and you're pounding it into uh, the shape of a bolt in this case. Uh, so you're pounding the head, you're rolling the threads on, uh, and that's all done at an incredibly fast pace, um, probably two to 300 bolts in a minute. Uh, so the time that it spends on a machine uh, is very little, and if you're paying a certain amount per hour uh, for the machine, uh, obviously the faster you can get parts through, the better. Uh, and what we want to make sure that we're doing is we're fitting a process um, with the type of fastener. And we get lots of customers that come in, for example, and they'll have a um, a special flange bolt designed. I've got a hole that's bigger than normal or a slot that I want this to bridge across. So I just made a really big flange. I kind of incorporated a fender washer and a bolt all into one and, and here's what it looks like. Easy to draw, but when it comes to making it, that material won't always 
flow all the way out to that very large diameter. Uh, so there are limitations to the process. And part of what we want to do as an engineering team, uh, since very few engineers have ever really had a class on fasteners, is we want to be the, uh, the consultant, the experts that they go to, to find out really what is manufacturable because the difference in machining a part to that same shape out of bar stock, uh, a part that they were hoping might cost 10 or 20 cents might really cost five bucks because you're making them one at a time on a CNC machine. And now instead of talking two or 300 parts in a minute, you're hoping to get a hundred parts done in an hour. Um, so the cost difference is very real. Uh, and that's a big part of what our engineering team does is working on the manufacturability uh, of different custom shapes that people come up with. To that end, that makes me think of downloading our prints. That's something that people can do for free. How does that help a customer? Well, first of all, it takes some of the load off of their uh, end from having to do the, the drawing. And I'm surprised by how um, many customers just go by a description rather than uh, than a blueprint uh, and once you have a print uh, it's a it's an official document it's a contract basically that well when we accept that print and say okay we'll get you some of these uh, we're we're agreeing to make it look like your print says it should look like and to the same strengths that your print says that it should be made to when you just have a description uh, you don't always have the detail uh, involved. So if somebody just says, I want it zinc plated, well, okay, as long as it looks a little shiny, I guess we're good. But if it rusts in six months, uh, uh, that same customer is gonna come back and say, you sold me a bad part because it's rusting already. Well, you didn't specify the thickness of the zinc or how many hours you want it to last in a, an industrial salt spray test. Uh, there was nothing for me to measure against. So when you have a print, uh, there are tolerances that we can inspect to. We can measure and say that the diameter does fit within the uh, 0.495 to 0 0.500 that the print called out. Uh, we're not just randomly throwing a half inch out there and letting the manufacturer make you know whatever tolerances they want on their own. Uh, so from a quality standpoint, a quality engineer or a lab technician at our customers on our customers end uh, has to have a document that they can measure to. And a print allows uh, them to do that. It's the document that that controls uh, what they're measuring. And we have those online for almost all of our fasteners for free. So why wouldn't uh, uh, a customer of ours that is just using descriptions, why wouldn't they download them for free and then give them right back to us? And now we have, they have a way to hold us accountable for what we're selling to them. So Hopefully you mentioned- that made sense. It, I followed, and I, I think I okay. got a good follow-up question for you too. Uh, you mentioned preventing corrosion. So when it comes to that task, there are a lot of options out there. How are people supposed to know what to choose? Yeah, it's it's really not fair to expect that uh, uh, everyone that's using a fastener understands how long something should last. So uh, we spend an awful lot of time with customers talking about uh, salt spray hours, which is the way that we test in the industry, uh, but also the real life implications of that. So if something lasts uh, 100 hours in a salt spray test, does that mean it's gonna last a year or 10 years? Or uh, how is that different from one location to another? Um, in farm areas in, uh, in Iowa, uh, as long as you're not putting fertilizer on the fasteners, if it's just uh, uh, a sign on the side of the road uh, that says speed limit of whatever, uh, that bolt is gonna last a lot longer than if that same speed limit sign was sitting on a coastal area near Los Angeles. So you've got a lot more smog, you've got salt water in the atmosphere. Uh, there's a lot more things that will be eating at that, uh, that plating or coating that you have on your fastener. So you are, uh, you're really comparing apples and oranges uh, from one location to another. So it's a lot of what we do working with customers to help identify where their parts are gonna be used Will it be in a saltwater uh, coastal type environment or will it be in the middle of, of Iowa? Uh, and then help them look for the most cost effective way to uh, put enough cost, uh, enough corrosion resistance on their part uh, to last as long as they expect their part to last. 
Sometimes that means we end up going with stainless steel right from the start because none of the platings and coatings uh, are going to last long enough. Other times uh, we look at what people are doing and think, gosh, that's really overkill for what you're doing. There's no sense putting a really high-end coating on a part uh, that may go on your lawnmower and your lawnmower gets kind of beat up by the end of your first year. The lawnmower doesn't look like the brand new lawnmower you brought home from uh, from Home Depot or wherever you've got the lawnmower. So uh, if it's uh, if it's part that's going to take a beating and no one expects it to look great in a year, well, don't put the, the $100 coating on it.